Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? Happy Sunday. I hope your guys' weekend has been full of relaxation, reading, family, whatever you needed to have a great weekend. I hope you got it. Um, it has got a little bit warm here in Northern California, so I've actually been quite content to stay inside. My kids, my bed, my book, what else do I need? Getting some chores done, but not doing much more than that, to be honest with you. Uh, today's video is going to be my happy book birthday video for the month of July. I know it's coming to you a few days earlier than I normally do it, but I am going to be traveling for the beginning of the week, so I'm not probably going to get a video out until the end of the week. And I wanted to make sure that all of these titles made it onto your radar before July started and before books started coming out. As always, these are books that have either been sent to me by the publisher and or I have requested from the publisher. They are in no way all of the books coming out in the month of July. That video would take forever. Um, and they're no, by no ways the only books that I think that you should be reading. There are tons of titles out there, but these are ones that I'm super excited about. I have in my hands, so I want to tell you about. As always, I want you to get out your pen, get out your paper, get out your Goodreads. However you order your TBR, please do that. And then if you have the ability, order these from your pre-order uh, pre these from your independent bookstore and or have your library pre-order them for you so the authors know that you're excited about their books. Let's get started. Um, we're gonna start with July 9th. I don't have any books in my collection that are coming out on July 2nd, so July 9th is where we're gonna begin. And we're gonna start with this novel, and that's The Wind That Lays Waste by Selva Almada. This is translated from the Spanish by Chris Andrews and is coming out from Grey Wolf Press. This is the debut novel of Selva Almada, and this is the story of a preacher and his young daughter who are traveling across Argentina when one day their car breaks down. They wind up the house of an old mechanic and his assistant, a young boy, and it's really about them having conversations, a man of faith with a man you know, really grounded in the reality of his life, sort of the pragmatism and skepticism that comes with the life that he has led. Um, it's about faith. It's about trust. It's about relationships. Um, I have a feeling that this book is really going to speak to me. You guys know how I love a book that has very little plot, but is more about people. And I have a feeling this is going to be that book. So again, that's The Wind That Lays Waste by Selva Almada. This is out from Grey Wolf Press. And again, it's translated from the Spanish by Chris Andrews. The next book that I'm going to tell you about is a graphic novel. How exciting, right? And that's The Magician's Alice's Story. This is by Lev Grossman with Lila Sturgis and Pius Bach. This is out from Arcadia. I'm going to hold that up for you guys, too, because it's a word I don't know exactly how to pronounce. Um, and I know a lot of us are familiar with the Magician series, Lev Grossman's three book uh, trilogy. Um, it, it's sort of like an adult take on the Magician school. Um, it's much darker and I absolutely actually loved it. It had a fantastic, fantastic um, TV show on Sci-Fi Channel that you guys can go and dive into if you like as well. I really like that they've decided to go into a character's backstory or story um, in a different medium. In the graphic novel medium, Alice is a character that you will not forget from the books if you have read them, and if you haven't read them, and then get your hands on this. Um, so this is Lev Grossman's uh, with Lila Sturgis and Pius Bank. This is The Magician, Alice's Story, and this is coming out again on July 9th, so you can get your guys' hands on it, and it is a beautiful trade paperback. Cool. The next book is actually quite interesting. This is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, Tadeo, and this is coming out from, you know when you have a moment and you can't find a publisher on a book? That's just funny. This is from Avid Readers Press, and this is coming out again also on July 9th. Now, this book was quite popular at Book Expo America. People wanted to get their hands on it, and I believe my copy is signed. Um, yes, yes. And it's a debut, and this is being billed as narrative journalism. This is the story of three women that um, Lisa follows for over an eight-year period that are having different sorts of, I'm going to put it in quotes, sexual adventures. I'm just going to read you a little bit on the back. Lena is a homemaker in suburba, suburban Indiana. In a decade, it is a decade into a passionless marriage when she embarks on an affair that quickly becomes all-consuming and transforms her life. Salone is a glamorous entrepreneur in the Northeast. She is married to a man who likes to watch her have sex with other men and women. 
And Maggie is a high school student in North Dakota who begins a relationship with her English teacher that will have extraordinary consequences for them both, as well as the community in which they live. So for a decade, Lisa um, embedded herself into the lives of these three women. And then this is a book that sort of narratively tells that journalistic adventure or uh, adventure for Elisa. I think it sounds really interesting, thought provoking. And um, yeah, I'm excited for this one. So this is Three Women by Lisa Tadeo, Tadeo. And this is also out on July 9th. Okay. The next book goes a little bit different, and that is Copperhead by Alexi Zenter. This is out from Viking. This is the story of Jessup. Jessup is a young boy. His stepfather really rescued his family, really from poverty, and really got their family on uh, the direct, a direct path. So really came in and helped his family out. But he is then also put in prison for a hate crime that Jessup really can't bypass. He can't sort of put his mind around the conundrum that is the man who saved his family and this man that committed this atrocity that he is not, um, he doesn't want to be associated with, clearly. Um, but what happens is that his, while he's in high school, I want to say, uh, when his stepfather is released from prison, he has to sort of face this decision. Does he condemn this man for this crime that he believes he should be condemned for? Or how does he reconcile that with the sort of gratitude he feels for what his stepfather did for his family? So that's going to be very interesting. I think that sounds like a really, um, a, a real, a real interesting psychological adventure to go on with this character and how he deals with that. So this is Copperhead by Alec Alexi Zenter. This is out from Viking Books. Okay. One book that I've talked about a number of times on my channel and is finally coming out on July 9th is The Last List of Miss Judith Kratt. This is by Andrea Bobatis, and this is out from Sourcebooks. This is the story of a, a woman who has inherited sort of everything that has, her family has left and owns when one day her sister comes home. And the way it says it is that after her sister returns from decades, sparking an inventory of all that belongs to them, um, the Kratz used to rule this town that they lived in, but now they are a struggling family. The new household overflows with memories. And then it interweaves sort of what these two women are doing with a single day in time. I want to say it happened in one night in 1929, an event that sort of changed everything within the household. So it kind of goes between those two things. Um, and I was actually, I think that that sounds really interesting. I actually requested this book and it was available at Book Expo America. So yeah. And this is The Last List of Miss Judith Kratt by Andrea Bobatis. And again, out from Source Books. And we're still on July 9th, just in case. The last book that's coming out on July 9th that I want to tell you about is Inhabitation by Teru Miyamoto. This is translated from the Japanese by Roger K. Thomas. And this is coming out from Counterpoint Press. Um, who I love. They are local to me, and I absolutely love them. But this book has sort of a complicated story, so this is what I'm reading word for word. It's 1970s. It's Osaka, and college student um, Tetsuki moves into a shabby apartment to evade his late father's creditors. But the apartment's electricity hasn't been reconnected yet, and he spends his first night in darkness. Wanting to hang up a tennis cap from his girlfriend, Yoko, he fumbles around in the dark and drives a nail into a pillar. The next day, he discovers that he has pierced the body of a lizard, which is still alive. He decides to keep it alive, giving it food and water and naming it Kin. Inhabitation unfolds from there, following the complication in his relationship with his girlfriend, a relationship with his supervisor who hides his heart disease at work, and his father's creditors, always close on his heels. Daunted, Tetsuzuki speaks to Kin night after night, and Kin's peculiarly tortured situation reflects the mingled pain, love, and guilt that infuses Tetsuzuki's human relationships. I didn't know how I was going to summarize that for you guys. But that's Inhabitation by Teru Mihamoto, translated from the Japanese by Roger K. Thomas, out from Counterpoint. I that book sounds weirdly fantastic, doesn't it? It's, I'm, I'm very enthralled with that idea. And there you go. Great cover, too. Okay, we are now on to July 16th, where we're going to talk about two books coming out. 
One is If You Want to Make God Laugh by Bianca Marius, who wrote Hum If You Don't Know the Words, which I don't have to say much more about this book because I absolutely have raved about it on my channel. The story of three women in South Africa in um, at the time when Nelson Mandela becomes the president of South Africa. It's how their lives intertwine. It deals with relationships, it deals with family, it deals with the AIDS epidemic throughout Africa. It is heart-wrenching and beautifully written and a story you will not want to miss out on. Please get your hands on if you want to make God laugh. It is amazing. Coming out again on July 16th from Putnam by Bianca Marius. The next book that is coming out is from a new press, and that's Feminist Press. And this is actually a reissue of a series of books. This one is called Native Tongue. This is book one in the series. It's by Suzette Hayden Elgin. I'm going to hold that up there for you, which is actually a pseudonym. This is a sci-fi dystopian feminist fantasy about a time where the 19th Amendment has been uh, rejected. It's in the future. And women are really more or less just bred to become interpreters. However, they after they have sort of been uh, in the... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? At the end of their career, they are all put in one location, and it's the story of a group of them who create their own language and are creating a way to revolt against the system. I did start about the first 25 pages of this book. It is really interesting. Um, it's going to be one that I have to sit down and think about. I don't read a lot of science fiction, but I think if you do read science fiction, it's going to be right up your alley. And it's a reissue again from Feminist Press. This is Native Tongue by Suzette Hayden Elgin, and it comes out again on July 16th. Okay, we're on to the next release date in July. There are four, four release dates. Well, five if you count July 2nd, but I didn't have any books. So we're on to July 23rd, where we're going to talk about The Floating Feldmans by Elisa Friedland. This is out from Berkeley, and this is the story of, she. I think she's 70. I want to make sure she's 70. Um, Annette Feldman tells herself that she, in books and a quiz, a quiz, she books a cruise for her entire family to celebrate her birthday. Turns out that her whole entire family does not care for each other. And what it says is, too bad her kids didn't get the memo that all she wanted was for everyone to get along for her birthday. So between the troublous and family secrets, old sibling rivalries, and her two teenage grandchildren, Annette's birthday vacation is looking more and more like the perfect storm. Adrift together on the open seas, the Feldmans will each face the truths they've been ignoring. I feel like this sounds like a fantastic summer read. I just, for some reason, I feel like this is something you need to be reading next to the pool while you have a drink or some iced tea or something like that under an umbrella with lots of sunscreen. Matthew Sharapa would be mad if I told you to be in the sun without sunscreen. So that's The Floating Feldmans by Alyssa Friedland, and this is, again, out on July 23rd. Another book that I've talked a bit about that's coming out is Gravity is the Thing by Jacqueline Moriarty. This is out from Harper on July 23rd. This is the story of Abigail 20 years ago when she was young. Her brother disappeared and they don't really know what happened to him. Around the same time, she started to get random chapters of a book, which I believe is called The Guidebook, which she has then used as a way to sort of direct her life, her adult life too, through many different aspects, being a single mom, going through a divorce, all of that kind of stuff. Then one day she gets an invitation to get to meet the person who has put together and or wrote the guidebook. And she, of course, believes that because it started at the same time her brother disappeared, that it has to have a connection. And she is going to put all of that together. Um, I do have a few friends who have already read this and absolutely loved it. So I'm super excited to get to it. And that is Gravity is the Thing by Jacqueline Moriarty out from Harper Books on July 23rd. Okay, I have two books that are coming out on July 30th. One happens to have one of the most beautiful covers that is coming out this year, and that is Speaking of Summer by Kalisha Buck Buchanan, and I want to put that up there, right? This is also out from Counterpoint. Um, when I uh, hauled this book, a lot of my friends have read her previous novel, Upstate, and absolutely loved it. Um, Kalisha's book is the story of um, Autumn Spencer, who one night, and I want to say if it gives me, on a December night in the cold, her, her sister disappears. And no one really does anything to sort of investigate the disappearance of her sister. Her sister has gone up onto a rooftop. You can see the footprints going out, but you don't see any footprints coming back. You don't see any additional footprints, and you don't see 
her body's never found. So she probably likely didn't jump. We don't really know. But what Autumn wants to know is she wants to know what happened to her sister. So with friends and neighbors, Autumn pretends to hold on through the crisis, but the loss becomes too great, the mystery, mystery too inexplicable, and Autumn starts to unravel, all the while becoming obsessed with the various murders of local women and the men who kill them, thinking their stories and society's complacency towards them might shed light on what really happened to her sister. I think this is probably going to tear my heart out. Doesn't that sound like a book that's going to make us all cry? So that's Speaking of Summer by Kalisha Buchanan out from Counterpoint Press on July 30th. Last but certainly not least in this haul is Home for Airing and Outcast Girls by Julie Kibler. This is coming out from Crown Books again July 30th. This is told in two parts. It's two stories. The first part is at the turn of the 20th century, we're in Texas, I want to say outside of Arlington. Yes, there is a home that has been put together for young girls and women who have sort of been thrown out of their lives due to a, a variety of reasons, being pregnant, um, out of wedlock, or drugs, or being a member of the um, sex profession, uh, prostitutes. Um, and this is a home where they can go and sort of reinvent themselves. They don't have to give up their babies, and they have to, they can sort of figure out what they're going to do with their lives moving forward. It's the story of two young girls in that home who become friends and what goes on there. Flash forward um, to the current times where we have a young woman who her name is Kate. She's a reclusive university librarian. I love her already. When she is sort of digging through, she finds the graves of these two young women and starts going through the records and creating a story. And as she starts to go through and learn about this home and these two young girls, it helps her put into perspective her life and some of the stuff that she has gone through herself. This book is high, high on my TBR. The only problem I have with this book at this point is that I struggle with the word airing. I don't know why. So, Home for Airing and Outcast Girls by Julie Kibler. This is out from Crown on July 30th. That is a whole stack of books. I hope all of them, all of them made it on your TBR. As always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, I thank you so much. You know I cannot do this without you. If you are, <clears throat> excuse me, if you are new to my channel, Welcome. I hope that you come back for more, and I hope that all of these books wind up being read by you, or you wind up making sure that other people read them because they sound like their type of book. As always, until next time, I wish you happy reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!